Good morning. Welcome to Seattle Community Church. I am so glad that you're joining us today. Today is a very special day. Uh, today's Mother's Day, but at Seattle Community Church, we like to celebrate all the women of the church. So I hope you will take the opportunity to let all the women around you know how much you appreciate them in your life. Another announcement is that Pastor Brenna is leading a Bible study on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. for women, and the title is Anxiety, an Opportunity for Spiritual Growth. So if you would like to join that Bible study, please contact Pastor Brenna at brennah at seattlechurch.org. Now, let's join Jay, our worship leader, as he leads us in some songs. Welcome to Seattle Community Church, and um, we're going to praise God with uh, Gene and Edward and Ben today. We're asking God to open up the heavens. May he be uh, welcomed here in this place, and may we praise him. Here we go. Church, please receive. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus Christ give you the confidence to follow. And the fire of the Holy Spirit keep you warm and safe on your walk with God today and all days. We pray this in his name. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Seattle Community Church Online Worship. My name is Pastor Brenna, and I am so glad that you are joining us on this wonderful Sunday morning. You know, every year on this day, we here at SEC set aside time to 
honor the women and the mothers among us, made in the image of God, the daughters of God, reveal to us special and unique aspects of the divine that have too often in history been ignored. And our scripture this morning is about just such a woman, and you will find it in the book of Acts, chapter 16. Friends, hear the word of God. We set sail from Tros and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city in the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river where we were supposed that there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and we spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, Lydia is often an overlooked figure in Scripture, or maybe even an underlooked figure in Scripture. Even for women, unlike the matriarchs of Sarah or Elizabeth or Mary or Ruth, Lydia gets just a few lines thrown away in the middle of Acts. But if we dig into these lines, we begin to see just how incredible she was and they are. We join our story today as Paul and Timothy and Silas arrive for the first time in Philippi. Later in his ministry, as you know, Paul will write to the church in Philippi, one of his most beloved churches, and give us the letter to the Philippians. And it makes me ask, have you ever wondered how the church in Philippi came to be? You know, in Acts, Lydia is a wealthy businesswoman who seems to have no male relatives left. No husband, no father, no sons are mentioned. She is the head of her household, wealthy. We know this from the purple cloth that she sells. A woman of God doing her best in the world. And when Paul arrives in her city, she and many other unnamed women are already gathered in prayer. And seeing them, Paul sits with them, reminiscent of Jesus as teacher, like with Mary and with Martha, and he begins to share. And we don't know what these women were doing there. We don't know if this was a regular gathering. Were they seeking God in this place together when monotheism was frowned in Roman colonies? We don't know. But we do know, friends, that wherever the heart longs for God's presence, God is bound to show up. And this time it was in the form of Paul. From this conversation, we find that Lydia, she is noted as the first convert in Philippi. And she leads her household, men and women and servants, to Jesus with her. She and her household are noted as the first baptized ones in Philippi, and in response to the good news, she opens her home and extends her hospitality to the disciples. More than this, though, she becomes the base for their missionary work in Philippi, and in doing so, she becomes a witness alongside Paul and Timothy and Silas. And it's after staying with her for a few days that we get the story of Paul being thrown in prison and the conversion of the jailer. And then Paul, we miss this, he returns to Lydia's before departing the city. You know, it's from these brief encounters that the church of Philippi is born. 
It is Lydia who is the mother of this church, and yet she is so rarely recognized. When Paul left Philippi, someone had to step up, had to give birth to this new Philippian community, and although the prison guard converts, it is Lydia. Lydia who has set herself as the base, the first convert, the first baptized. It is she who will go on to embody all the qualities that we think of when we think of moms. Through her faithfulness, she nurtures and supports and equips and she pours out her life for this fledgling community. And from her will come a community of sons and daughters that will bring Paul joy that will share the message of the gospel, that will send Paul support in jail, who will embody the good news of their own community. Lydia is not mother in scripture, and yet she is mother. You know, this day can be so complex for so many people, especially this year. What it means to be a mom, the joy and the pain that we feel depending on our own relationships with our mothers, the grief we can feel in missing our mothers, the joy of a new baby, the overwhelming pain of babies and children's lost, the struggles of infertility or unwanted singleness. In one day, we can swing from joy to sorrow and back again. And sometimes in the church, it can feel like there is only one model for mother, one model for woman. We venerate Mary, young and calm and peaceful, mother to a biological child, never angry or overwhelmed or frazzled. But mother in scripture is so much richer, so much more complex than that. And we see it in Lydia. In scripture, mothers have children. They've never born children. They raise children not their own. In scripture, mothers are married and single and divorced and widowed, and they are broken and complex and real, made in the image of God. And so this morning, I want to invite us to remember, to remember not just who is in scripture, but not just what is in scripture, but who, mothers and women that are vital to the word and the work of God, women who give birth to the gospel in word and flesh and deed. And so this morning, I want to invite you to hear the words of Emmy Kegler. I want to invite you to hear, as she says, to remember Dinah and Joseph, the children of Jacob and Rachel, burying their mother on the way to Bethlehem and leaving her grave behind. Because this morning, many children, no matter their age, suddenly or long past, know what it's like to celebrate without their mother. To remember Sarah and Rachel and Elizabeth and to celebrate with every woman who has held a newborn child in her hands and found it to be simultaneously the greatest gift and the hardest task she has ever faced. To remember the hundreds of women who never merited their names in scripture because they were unable to bear children and pass on the family faith because we too know and remember the women facing infertility and miscarriage and loneliness, who sit and wait for faint lines and wonder when it might be their turn or if God even hears you. We this morning remember Rahab and Deborah and Joanna and Phoebe, women whose work surprisingly outweighed the need to record whether or not they had children in scripture. Were they childless by choice, by circumstance? Were the names of their children lost to the waves of history? Were they shamed for putting work ahead of their families? Today, we honor women who follow God's leading, who know the children might not be for them and who choose different paths. 
This morning we're invited to remember the unnamed mother of Moses and the daughter of Pharaoh. Linked and yet so separate, one gave up her child to save her child. One took in a child despite the risks. And we remember all those women who have given up their children in hope of a better life for them. And we also remember every woman who has made a family through adoption, through fostering, through meals for their friends, kids, or being an aunt who has taken in or loved a child not her own because bone of bones is not always how families are made. We remember the shared grief of Naomi demanding call me bitter. We remember the unnamed wife of Job and all of the too many women who have buried their babies and their children too unbearably early. We remember. We remember Hagar and Tamar, wife of Ur, women whose only hope of protection and care lay in having a child with a man who was not married to them. We remember that Hagar was sent into the wilderness to die, her son Ishmael at her side, and we stand with the many women raising their children alone. And we remember the women whose destruction has become only a footnote while men made history. This morning we remember Rebecca and her twins, Isu and Jacob, already at war within her. We remember that she chose a favorite son, just as her husband had. And we hold in our prayers all of us as children who bear the trauma of parents who perhaps did what they thought was right, did the best that they could, and still scarred their children's hearts for life. We remember Hannah her heart so wounded by the abuse of her husband's other wife that she wept at the altar of God until she could not speak. And how Eli, the holy priest, assumed she must have been drunk to pray so hard. And this morning we remember and do not ignore that many women have had their heartbreak turned against them and used as a weapon. We remember the woman at the well, sunned, shunned and silenced by divorce. We remember her for the wretched freedom that can be found in it and the messiness of starting a new life with a broken heart. We remember the foreign women described in Ezra and Nehemiah, the wives of God's people, who came home with their husbands to rebuild the temple only to be cast aside by men claiming to be righteous and pure. And we remember how many mothers across this world have been made homeless and landless, often by reasons beyond their control, by powerful men who've turned them into pawns manipulated and ostracized them. This morning we remember the Syrophoenician woman alone, unsupported and persistent beyond comprehension on behalf of her dying child. We too know the women who have been mocked and pushed aside, whose insistence on justice and equality has met others' soured lips. This morning we remember Mary Magdalene, the very first preacher of the resurrection, soiled by centuries of slander that turned her from a wide-eyed witness into a reformed harlot. In her testimony, she gave birth to the church. And so we remember all of the women who have stood and been brave living into the gospel only to have it used against them. And this morning we remember the real Mary, the teenage girl, cradling her stomach, the shock of a miracle, the sureness of social judgment to come, who answered with a simple and determined yes, proving that age does not equal faith, and that in the youngest of girls, the most incredible works of God can be accomplished. And we remember Eve, 
the mother of all, bone of bones of the man of dust. Her name is a reflection in Hebrew for the word life. A woman who made mistakes and nevertheless was loved by God, flawed, and yet mother of humanity. This morning, wherever we are on this day, we gather to remember every woman who has found the inner courage to face the impossible, each woman who has heard the call of God and followed, women who through their blood and sweat, through their very bodies and faith, birthed a church, a savior, and the good news into the world. Women like Lydia, given a few lines in history for changing everything. And so I invite you this morning to celebrate the women in your life, the mothers in your life, the ones who bore you or the ones who nurtured you and pushed you and challenged you, grew you, supported you, taught you, brought you life. In the face of every single one of these women, you will see the face of God revealed. And you will find a daughter, a daughter of God, worthy of honor and praise. And so will you celebrate with me today as we lift up the daughters of God, named and unnamed, throughout time and history and around the world, who have brought forth a kingdom with them and continue to do so today. Amen. Friends, one of the ways that we can celebrate women here at SCC, that we can honor our mothers, is to continue to give faithfully. This church, this community, this building was built on the backs and the sweat of so many women who have given their lives to serve God. Also men, but this morning we are giving so much honor to the women who have served this community. We see them every Sunday when we're in person, be it as volunteers, working with kids, helping us serve lunch. In order for us to continue to have these amazing ministries, though, we need your support. So go ahead and pop online. You can send in a check, drop by, say hi to us. We would love to see you then to bring in your tithe, but please continue to give faithfully so that our daughters and their daughters can continue to experience the incredible ministry that is SCC. Now, it's time for us to celebrate the Lord's Supper. So if you have bread and wine around you, I wanna invite you to go and get it now. As Jesus gathered together with the disciples for the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And towards the end of the meal, he took the wine and he poured it out. And he said, this is my blood shed for you, the sign of the new covenant. Every time we eat this bread and drink this wine, we are reminded that there is life in Jesus Christ. Will you join with me in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you so much for sending us Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life, death, and resurrection that promises us also life. Lord, we know that our life starts now. Help us that we may live it to the fullest, spreading your good news to the world. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, you may take the bread, take a little piece of it, and dip it into the wine. And as you take the bread and you can say, the body of Christ broken for you. And as you dip it into the wine, you can say, the blood of Christ shed for you. And then you can take the bread and wine. Now, we have a very special video and announcement slash celebration from our children's ministry. Good morning, SCC, and happy Women's and Mother's Day. Now, thank you so, so much to all of the incredible women at our church who go out of their way to really care for our church and make it feel like a family. 
Now in honor of you all, I asked the kids in our children's ministry to share with us a little bit about what they love about their moms. I asked them, if your mom were a superhero, what would her superhero name and powers be? I also asked them to share what their mom does that makes them feel extra special and loved. So join me now as we see what they had to share about their moms. If Oma were a superhero, what would she be? Okay. Okay, if mom was a superhero, what would her superhero name be? Amazing girl. Super mom. Super mom. Super mom. Freezing Oma. I saw so away. Ice cream laser. The epicest cook. Super macaroon mommy. Baker caker. Health healer. Something. Glitter. Pumpkin. Face. Umbrella. The BD woman. Boogie down woman because she always reminds me of happiness and celebration and stuff like that. Well, I don't really know what that would be, but you know, her powers would definitely be he being the best um, in existence. And what would be her superpowers? All the superpowers. Crazy powers. I call it just like Elsa. Strength, super speed. And her weapon will be a size cannon and I can shoot through that form and then create a force field. Umbrellas. So she can literally like shoot umbrellas. She had a bomb and then she threw it and then sort of like confetti and things would come out. And she'd be able to like make ice cream from like this magical bag. She would be able to melt ice cream and then suck out the ice cream flavors and then turn it into that fruit. Also, she can hold out her hand and all the ice cream instantly just breaks into perfect slices. And she's a very good cook. Making good food wherever she went because her food's always the best. Able to throw um, pies and cakes as projectiles at bad guys. Change people's minds. We don't clean up our mess. Ah. She wants us to clean up our own mess. Instant healing because she's a doctor. To heal people. What does Alma do that makes you feel really loved? Hugs and kisses. Hugs. Kisses. She hugs me a lot and always says why she's thankful for me. She hugs me. She and hugs you when? When I'm being happy. And when when I cry, then my mom gives me a hug when, I, when I'm sad. Aww. What my mama does to make me feel special is, well, literally everything. How good she cares about us. My mom is special because she takes good care of us and she makes good macaroons for us. Making, making, making pancakes, makes and making banana muffins. My mom makes me feel special when she makes my birthday cake for my birthday and works super hard. Mama always cares for me and makes and help makes good food for me and she watches out for me. Like I'm going to soccer practice, but. Appa's not gonna be there. She makes me take my phone, so um, so I'll be safe. She cooks really good food with us and uh, for us. Cooking good food and taking us fun places with her own time. She takes us to fun places, and I really like that. She buys things not just for herself, but for others too. I love my mother because she helps me focus on the things I need to do every day. My mom uh, makes me feel really special and loved because she always mentions that she loves me and she feels like she doesn't know what her life would be without us kids. I always want to play with her, but she's always so busy. But I still love her even though she doesn't play with me often. I love her and she loves me more. She always gives an excuse when I say I love her more. And I love my mommy because she always loves me so much that I just feel um, warm-hearted. Happy Mother's Day to all um, the moms in SCC. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy
Why do you love Amaya and how does she make you feel special? Okay. Nice. Happy Mother's Day, SCC. So, if you don't know me or recognize me, my name is Boston and I'm the Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries here at SCC. And that means that I get to spend my day working with your wonderful teenagers. And so in order to make today extra special and to honor all of you wonderful mothers, what we wanted to do was to make a video for you. I asked the students to answer two simple questions. One of them was, what is your favorite uh, thing about your mom? And the second was, what is your favorite memory with your mom? Please enjoy what follows. This is literally my 15th try. I'm so done right now. Okay. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I would say what I like about my mom is that she's so caring and helpful. She's also very hardworking and never fails to make my days feel so special. Uh, my favorite thing about you is how loving and caring you are. My favorite thing about you is how you're always kind and willing to put other people first. My favorite thing about my mom is how understanding she is when we make a mistake. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I just want to say thank you for all the things you do and express my gratitude for all the love you give. Happy Mother's Day. Um, mother. My favorite uh, thing about my mom is that she's very caring. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. My favorite thing about you is that you're always there to help me out or to be someone that I can talk to when I'm sad or lonely. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. My favorite things about you are how hardworking you are and loving and caring towards our family. My favorite thing about you is that you are always there for me and willing to do your best to support me. You are so compassionate and loving, and I am lucky to have you as my mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom! One of my favorite things about you is that whenever I'm feeling down, you always know how to cheer me up. You're really such a great mom to me and my sister. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. My favorite thing about my mom is that she's very hardworking. Uh, I just wanted to say that I love you, and... I love how you are always taking care of me and like when I'm sick, staying up till like to take care of me and I really love you. Happy Mother's Day SCC. Um, what, my favorite thing to do with you is when we go to the park and we kick around a soccer ball. It's really fun and some of my favorite memories are there um, hanging out with you. So thanks so much for being a great mom. Uh, my favorite memory with you is how you're always at my baseball games supporting me. And my favorite memory with you is when we used to play with those little toy cars right before I went to sleep. My favorite memory with her always changes because every day is special when she's there. And honestly, I don't think I can pick out a favorite memory with you, considering every day with you is just another to add to the list. It's hard to remember a special moment with you because every moment is enjoyable. Um, my favorite memory with my mom is, um, I mean, there's really just too many to choose from. Uh, I think one of my favorite things about you is your spirit of servitude and just how much you're willing to give. Um, as for my favorite memory with you, <laughs> I think it's probably just after you and dad showed up to my uh, first performance and gave me a flower. It was really nice and I really cherish that memory. My favorite memory with you is just all the times that you've helped me through a lot of things when I've just been really stressed or sad. Uh, I'm not sure about a favorite memory, but um, one of our favorite things to do is just to like go out to eat and talk. Yeah. Um, I'd say one of my favorite memories with my mom is that we went on a Just Us road trip to Portland, Oregon and we got to spend the day shopping, eating, um, just talking about our past and all our good memories with each other. Happy Mother's Day, SEC! 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 Happy Mother's Day, SCC. Um, yeah. Happy Mother's Day, SCC. <laughs> Church, join with me. 
as we sing, came to my rescue. And on this Mother's Day, uh, my prayer is that all the ladies out there, that uh, whatever you're going through, uh, you may lean upon God for him to continue to give you strength and rescue you as you need um, to walk this life. Falling on my knees. Falling on my knees in worship. All I am to seek your face. Lord, all I am is yours.
Amen. And now the blessing from our elder. Hello, SCC family. My name is John Shepard, one of the elders here at the church. And um, I've been asked to do the blessing today. So please bow your head while we, and let's say a prayer to the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord walk with you. May the Lord continue to have his hands on your shoulders in order to support you and care for you and your family. I keep the folks that are sick and the ones that are dealing with some real life problems in our prayers and hope that each one of you have a God-blessed day. Thank you. Bye-bye.